1077 The Pulse, News Talk 981 WTSN. Good afternoon, Kaylin and Company, a delight to have you with us. I want to thank uh, Ella the Pearl Monroe for filling in on uh, Friday and Monday, but I'm back and uh, happy to be back and happy to have our next guest. And it's Coach Carol Phillips. It's the Ask Coach Carol segment of Kale and Company. And uh, Coach Carol, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Ken. How are you? And this is your first time. I'm doing well. This is your first time on uh, News Talk 98.1 WTSN. Yes. So you're reaching a whole new audience on the seacoast. And I understand uh, last Friday we had a call for our uh, psychic, Sue McPhee, uh, from Maine. So you never know who's out there. That's right. Yeah. That's great. Love the seacoast. Yeah. Oh, it's it's a beautiful spot. And great to be on a great radio station like News Talk 98.1 WTSN. And uh, Coach Carol, I know you've been busy because you always are. <laughs> it does seem that way, doesn't it? <laughs> it is that way. It is that way. No doubt about it. So what have you been up to and uh, what's in your future? Last week, I was up in Rockport, Maine, doing a wellness presentation to close out a conference um, that was going on up there. And it was just so beautiful, even though it's winter. It was so beautiful up there that it was at the Samoset Resort. So it was right on the, the ocean and uh, just so good for the brain. So yeah. that was that good. was good. Uh, yeah. Um, it was also, good to get away, a little change of venue. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it it is. It's good for the brain. It is. It was it a is. long drive, but it was good downtown. Well worth it. Well worth it. Right. Um, so we've been busy doing a lot of uh, presentations, working with business leaders. And um, I just wanted to mention the website. It's AskCoachCarol.com. That'll bring you to our health design page. And we're working more with business leaders um teaching them the importance of why they need to prioritize health, wellness, and safety in the workplace. So if you're looking for any leadership training for any special events that you're doing or just for your team, especially your direct supervisors, uh, 53% of employees leave their jobs because they're not happy with their direct Mm, supervisor. So, um, you know, we can come in and help you significantly improve productivity, reduce absenteeism, and create a healthier workplace. So, Serious topics, but also teaching people to have fun at work, which keeps people happy and reduces turnover. Very important to have fun at work. Absolutely. J-Dog and I have fun at work every day. You do. Every single day we do. It's All five great. days and sometimes yeah. six and sometimes seven if need be. <laughs> it, it's great hearing you guys laugh. That's such an important element. So if you want to um, get in touch with us, go to AskCoachCarol.com or you can call us directly at 603 603- Three two one two seven five zero, and I should have mentioned in, in your introduction, your coach Carol. I don't I don't mean to uh, to break your stride here, but we'll get back to your your schedule. But uh, folks, hearing you for the first time on uh, News Talk ninety eight one WTSN, Carol Phillips is the author of a double award winning book, Fifty Two Simple Ways to Health. Her first venture as an author. And she wins two awards, folks. So you know it's a good book. I wonder. I hope it's available somewhere on the Seacoast. But if not, uh, you can probably uh, get it on Amazon. Get right? it on Amazon. Yeah, paperback, ebook, and audiobook. There you go. Fifty-two simple ways to health. It's a great book. You can read, you know, one chapter every day, or you know, even once a week, and you'll get through it in a year. It's an easy read, and yeah. it will bring people who especially people who don't know much about, you know, health and wellness and motivating themselves all the way through to taking better care of themselves in all different areas, you know, stress management, exercise, nutrition, et cetera. So it's a very easy read, but it's meant to really help people change their thinking so that they change their beha- their um, choices and their behaviors for the better. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But I, I'm sorry I, I interrupted, but I wanted to get that in so... Uh, people knew a little bit more about you. Thank you so much, and I'm excited about all of our new listeners. Um, so um, I also wanted to mention that Granite State Independent Living, right here in Concord, they're a nonprofit that help people with disabilities. Um, they also work with at-risk youth and seniors. They are having their uh, big fundraiser on Saturday, March 7th. It's their nine, ninth annual Hoops on Wheels event. And it's a wheelchair basketball tournament. 
Um, so whether you're disabled or not, and you're a player in the tournament, then you you play in um, a wheelchair. It's from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Runlet Middle School in Concord. Um, people with or without disabilities compete in the wheelchairs for the championship title. They are looking for sponsors, players, and announcers for the event. Last year, more than 20 teams competed, laughed, and got some great exercise and left with a sense of pride. So join in on the event on Saturday, March 7th. They're going to have a 50-50 raffle. They're going to have concessions. Um, So are you ready for some real March madness? (laughs) There you go. So go to gsil.org slash hoops, or you can find them on Facebook. Their Facebook page for this event is Hoops on Wheels 2020. So join us. It's going to be a great, great day. Uh, absolutely. So at the Runlet uh, Middle School in Concord. All yes. right. Outstanding. Outstanding. Should be a great event. So what else is happening, Coach Carroll? We're what? talking about, in fact, we mentioned this, uh, and uh, it's you know, step outside your comfort zone is what we're going to talk about today. Yes, that's today's topic. So especially, you know, we're off to a good start with the new year, and we made it through January. Everybody, you know, came up with all their new New Year's resolutions, and then two weeks later they failed, and now they're looking to get back on the bandwagon, right? At, well, absolutely, <laughs> and, uh, and, and you know, we want your participation as well at 866 823 a 1077, uh, if you have stepped outside of your comfort zone recently. In fact, uh, J-Dog stepped out of his comfort zone recently. Uh, he uh, had never done basketball play-by-play on the radio before. And he had an opportunity to do it and and succeeded. Interesting. And, and the reviews were excellent last for the night, game. Yeah, last night, yeah. it was uh, Bo Merrimack Valley. Yeah, yeah. and... Uh, I'm not surprised, J Dog, because you're awesome. Oh, thank you. Please. So, congratulations to J Dog. Pat Kelly was helping out as well, and uh, I, 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 I didn't hear it, but I, I, I read the reviews by some of our station personnel, and uh, they did a great job. So, I guess they don't need me. So, there you go. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> we always need both of you. The more, the merrier. Yes. What would we do without either of you? But that's that's a, a recent example of uh, someone, uh, J Dog, that stepped out of his comfort zone and succeeded, and you can too. That's awesome, and that's what you know. The whole thing about people want to feel like they've succeeded, but just stepping out of your comfort zone, you're a winner. So we're going to talk about that and how it's related to our health and wellness because that is typically what keeps us from moving forward. Is we're afraid to step out of our comfort zone, and. You know, nothing grows in our comfort zone, right? So if we're not doing anything new and exciting, and our brains like doing new, exciting things, but sometimes we get nervous yep. about stepping out of our sure, comfort zone. Sure, absolutely. Because yeah. we do live very much in a society of when you do something, you either succeed or fail. And that's very black and white, no pun intended, thinking. Yep. When most of life is gray, the gray area, there's a lot more gray area. And I like to think of you know, moving through each day and being successful as we're either succeeding or we're learning, you know, succeeding or growing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you go all the way back to when you were little and you were learning to do new things, we were constantly stepping out of our comfort zone because we wanted to try new things and Mm -hmm. learn new things. Absolutely. But then as time goes by, we start developing these really unhealthy habits of staying in our comfort zone, which really keeps us from growing. So, now that I think of it, J Dog. Now that I think of it, this past week, not only did you do the the basketball game, yeah, but uh, you went on uh, one of those virtual reality rides too. Yes, which was yeah. you know might have been <laughs> might have been considered uh, out of your comfort zone, maybe out of my comfort zone too. But yes, we I'm, did it. I'm, I'm glad you did. We, it. I'm glad I did it too. Yeah. because this was the way that the virtual reality tour. It felt like you were flying. <laughs> and to your point, Coach Carroll, I didn't fly until I was the age of 31, going down to <laughs> spring training with Ken five years ago in 2015. Wow! So that was a massive portion of a comfort zone that I was because flying is still not my thing. But if mm-hmm. I got to do it, I got to do it. And I finally was able in 2015 to say, you know what, 31 years of age, it's the safest way to travel. You're not going to 
things bad things aren't going to happen. Just go on the plane, go to Florida, and enjoy the nice weather and work your tail off in Fort Myers. And that's what all those things did. And that's that's what happened. Nice. So all the all the bad things that were erased from my memory, uh, or just slowly but surely getting erased from my memory each second that I was in the air, thinking, you know what, we'll be all right. Mm -hmm. I can totally relate because I'm afraid of flying and I have to do the whole mental play the game, remind myself that it's the safest way to travel. And I, I'm the same way, the takeoff and the landing, I really struggle with, but then once I'm up there, my brain can go in denial as long as I don't keep reminding myself how far off the ground I am. Yeah, exactly. And and remember this was winter, Kenny. So we went, we, we went from Boston yeah. To I know you had a different flight, but you were still Boston to uh, to uh, Fort Myers. Right here we were. It was cold too. It was really cold. This was uh, early uh, February of 2015, right? And uh, and the hours go by, and then it's sunny weather. So I'm looking, you know, uh, the the seat window, right? Looking and say, you know what? That, that's 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 not going on in New Hampshire right now. You're seeing all you know this uh, kind of almost swampland, right? And you know the cooler temperatures and the sun's out. No snow whatsoever. So I'm thinking to myself, yeah, in a few more minutes, uh, I'll, I'll be in the state of Florida for the first time ever. Because <laughs> that was my first time also in Florida. The furthest I had gone down south was uh, Washington, D.C. on a bus trip, a uh, field trip at Concord High School in uh, 1999. Wow. So, And that wasn't a comfort zone thing. That was a just, I had never been there before, and we did that. So that's what that was. Yeah. And uh, I, I vowed one day, I, I'm hoping to go to every single state in the country at some point. So, Very yeah. good. Very good. Well, you've got a few good to go, J Dog. Got, got a few, few to go. go. I got a few to go. Yes, you do. <laughs> Quite a few. Uh, but uh, but nonetheless, uh, and we stepped out, and uh, I, I tell you, fly, that virtual reality ride. They went uh, everywhere, didn't my, they? they my, went my stomach down. did more flips during that than <laughs> it's ever happened on a, on a regular airplane. Pirate you know? ships, yeah. they were on yeah. the corkscrew little right. things like that. They, yeah. they did everything then, Kenny. I was like, what? what's next? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know the sky's the limit, no pun intended. All right, right, right. right. So, so there's two things, Jay Dong, that you did this past week, stepping out of your comfort yeah. zone. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. Uh, you say, You're way so, ahead of the game. So, yeah, we want to hear from people who've stepped out of their comfort zone, too, if you want to chime in at uh, 866-823-1077. Yeah, absolutely. Give us a call. Tell us what you're eager to do or what you've done where you really had to step out of your comfort zone. Right. And whether you felt like you were successful or not, you're a winner because you made the effort. And, you know, the good thing is your brain will remember that you did it. Yep. You were successful in stepping out, out of your comfort zone, so you can do that again. Yeah, exactly. So, yes. you know, what are you itching to do, but for whatever reason, you never seem to take one step toward putting your thoughts into action. So navigating through our work days and personal obligations make it easy to continually put our own wants and needs on hold. So taking that first step and stepping out of your comfort zone can be scary for some people. However, remember that nothing grows inside your comfort zone. And for us to grow and keep learning and trying new things, we need to keep moving forward. And usually that will involve stepping out of our comfort zone. But we need to look at what are some of the elements involved in why people don't step out of their comfort zone. Because sometimes we have to analyze things mm-hmm. and figure them out right. that, so that we can solve the problem and move forward. So that's what we're going to be talking about today is identifying those times that you're uncomfortable, why it's happening, and what you can do to overcome it. So one of it is, one of the reasons is we just automatically know that parts of whatever we want to do are going to be uncomfortable. We're either nervous, we're, we have a fear of failure, we might not even be conscious of the fact that we have a feel, fear of failure, or just we don't like that that feeling in the pit of our stomach when yeah. we're uncomfortable stepping out of our comfort zone. And so, you know, we're kind of like the turtle, right? We come mm-hmm. kind of go back in and, and stay where we're safe in our own shell mm-hmm. um, and getting past those little times because sometimes we need to see what we need to push through so that because otherwise sometimes we just subconsciously we keep procrastinating on not doing what we really want to do. And then we don't want to get to the point where years later we're like, oh, I wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. Right. So some of it is it's just that feeling of discomfort. However, 
you'll notice that a lot of times if you recognize that and push through it, you'll notice that there were only a few moments that were uncomfortable. And then the enjoyment and the reward and the sense of accomplishment for whatever you wanted to do far outweigh, you know, those few moments of feeling uncomfortable. Sure, because you can talk about it and, and brag about it forever. That's that right. That you stepped out of that comfort zone. Right. It's like, I think the uh, the uh, for a lot of people, I think of two things that immediately come to mind for a lot of people. And I mean, it, it doesn't always apply to, you know, the stepping out of your comfort zone doesn't always apply to recreation or, you know, quote unquote, fun things to do. Sometimes it, it might be something at work that uh, requires you stepping out of that comfort zone. But I think of two things, uh, you know, like being up in a hot air balloon for some people. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, parachute jumping. Oh, now, yes. The two things that uh, really, you really have to step out of your comfort zone for, you know, jumping out of an airplane, I think. Right. And some people, yeah. if they're dying to do them, yeah. then they don't have a problem with it. Right. But other people they might want to do it but they're they're really really nervous about it. Right. And uh and the hot air balloon uh, to a lesser extent. I mean that's you know it does, to, to me doesn't seem as dangerous as jumping out of an airplane or or the fear factor doesn't seem to be the same as jumping out of an airplane. But I think that both you know ha, you know there's a lot of trepidation for both among a lot of people. Right. Yeah. And I'm sure just like with the fear of flying the statistics of jumping out of a plane, you know, with a professional company. Right, yeah. The, your chance of getting hurt or killed are much, much less than getting into a car accident on, right. car accident on any day of the week. Right. No, I'm, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> I'm sure that's true. And, you know, uh, troubles on hot air balloons probably don't happen all that much either. So, uh, but but people do have, uh, some people anyway, have a fear of, uh, of those two things, and I'm sure a lot of others, too. Uh, but those are the things that recreationally come to mind. Yes. But uh, I, I'm sure it also applies in uh, you know workplace situations and being placed in a situation where you uh, have never been before. Right, exactly. And yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because the difference in work situations, more often you're in situations where you have to push yourself out of your comfort zone because you're being asked to do something. Mm -hmm. You know, you're being asked to head yeah. up a, new, a big project and yeah. you haven't headed up a big project before or whatever. So a lot of times we just swallow our fear and just nod our head and say, okay. And we do it because we know we need to do it for the company or our boss, whatever. Yeah. Um, and we kind of feel like we don't have a choice. So that's a great point because in our personal lives, too often we have the choice. Right. Yeah. And that doesn't serve us well because then we tend to, to hold back. Yeah. Um, but even in the work settings, if you recognize that there are times when you don't step out of your comfort zone, that's going to reduce your chance of getting the promotion and the raise because yeah. a lot of times companies want to see people stepping out of their comfort zone sure. and, and trying new things and being willing to step in and help in areas where they haven't before. Oh, exactly. Just like J Dog did. J Dog did recently, calling that basketball game. So there you go. Stepped out of the comfort zone, did it, and succeeded. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, you're much better off making the effort, even if things don't go well, and you feel like you quote unquote failed. Although I don't like yeah. that word, um, you still, you know, have the success of you stepped out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And now you've experienced that, so you're going to be much more likely to apply that again in the future. Right. No. So, you know, what are some of the things, you know, if people want to call in today, call in and tell us what are some of the things that hold you back from stepping out of your comfort zone? You know, you can call and ask us some questions on what you can do to move forward. And I thought of another example was that, say somebody's always wanted to learn to play tennis. Right. And... You know, they, they sign up, you know, they want to sign up for some lessons, but they're feeling silly. They don't know what to go and buy for a racket. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they don't want to look silly, quote unquote, in front of the instructor that right. they have no idea yep. how to play. Yep. Um, or other people are going to be around watching me, judging me. Um, but if you think about it, if you don't push yourself to do that, 
you could lose years and years of enjoyment of something you've been wanting to do. Right. Uh, you could say that for tennis. You could say just the same thing about golf uh, as well. Right. Uh, for people uh, who, you know, are nervous about uh, getting out on the golf course or want to take some lessons and, and uh, you know, afraid of what they may look like initially if they have never tried it before, you know, if they get a little instruction, uh, you know, and, and the instructors are used to that. They they know if you're taking instructions, chances are you're you're new to the uh, particular sport. So, right, and there's yeah. so many different elements. You yeah. know, the fact that, okay, am I, am I not going to have the skill? Am right. I not going to be coordinated? But also, yeah. I don't know any of the lingo. And right. I feel silly yeah. because even the most simple golf yeah. terms, I don't even know what they mean. But you know what? We all start somewhere. Exactly. We all start somewhere. And you know what? You find you push yourself out of your comfort zone. You start talking to people and, you know, you're the beginner. They want help. You yeah. know, good instructors are eager to help you succeed. No, exactly. Exactly. Because then they feel if, if you do, it's, it's a success story for them. Right. Uh, without question. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So I, I bet uh, among our audience here in New Hampshire and in southern Maine as well, somebody has a success story that they would like to share about themselves stepping out of their comfort zone, whether it was in a work situation or a recreational situation like, like we've talked about as well. I would like to hear success stories and, and also hear from people who are having some trepidation about of stepping out of their comfort zones. Right, absolutely. And I love simple tips that help people move forward. So if you want to share a simple tip on what you do when you're in these situations, because sometimes if we have one little tip in our brain yeah. where it's like, okay, whenever I'm in this uncomfortable situation, this is what I'm going to do, and that's going to help me move ahead. So give us a call at one eight six six eight two three one zero seven seven. And share your tips on how you are successful in stepping out of your comfort zone. And that number works throughout the state of New Hampshire and in Maine as well, if you're listening to us uh, in Maine. Very good. Yeah. Um, so another element is worrying about what other people might think or say. So how much time do we spend in our lives not doing what we want to do because we're worried about what other people might think and a, say? A lot. Probably more than we should. Absolutely yeah. more than we should. And I remind people that if you're stepping out of your comfort zone or you're just trying to be yourself, you know, whether it's just saying, you know, sharing a thought, an opinion, um, being silly in the moment, having fun, and somebody else makes you feel bad, you know, they criticize you, they make fun of you, whatever, remember, that's not your problem. That's their problem, right? So exactly. something as simple as if you just remind yourself, okay, it's not that I'm, you know, weird, although I love embracing my weirdness. <laughs> when I was younger, I was very shy. Yeah. And I would keep to myself and I wouldn't, you know, say things. You know, I'd stop myself from being myself. But as, you know, now I've gotten old, right? And oh, come older, on now, Coach Carol. older. <laughs> um, you know, it's like, you know, I'm just being me. And if they don't like that, well, you know, that's that's their issue. So exactly. And, and we're and all we, different. And we all embrace your weirdness. We Thank do. You. We do. <laughs> Thank you. I'm proud of my weirdness. <laughs> As you should be. So and, you know, we the other thing we do is we spend a lot of time in our own heads comparing ourselves to other people. And that doesn't serve yeah. us well, because most of the time when we're comparing ourselves to somebody else, we'll we're either leaving ourselves feeling inferior to them. You know, whatever we're imagining in our brains, thinking that their lives are perfect or better or whatever. Or if it's a situation where we're comparing ourselves to somebody else in our own heads and we're thinking we're better than them, well, that's no good either, right? So notice if you're spending time comparing yourself to somebody else because it usually doesn't have a really good outcome mm -hmm. and it keeps us from reaching out to other people and meeting more people and accepting people's differences. So don't worry so much about other, what other people are thinking or saying because most of the time, you're probably wrong if you're thinking that they're thinking something negatively about you. Exactly. Coach Carol Phillips is with us. She is the author of the double award-winning book, 52 Simple Ways to Health. And uh, you can get that book uh, on uh, on Amazon if you can't uh, find it at a bookstore near you. You can find it at Amazon for sure. 
And we'd love to hear from you if you have uh, overcome your fears and uh, stepped outside your comfort zone, or whether you're thinking about doing something that is uh, outside your comfort zone. Either way, I'd love to hear from you. Toll free, 866-823-1077. 1077 The Pulse, News Talk 98.1 WTSN. It's Kale and Company, 135 on a Tuesday afternoon with Coach Carol Phillips, best-selling author of 52 Simple Ways to Health, double award-winning book. And today we're talking about stepping outside your comfort zone. And you know what? In your case, maybe, you know, writing a book, you had never done that before. Oh, I... <laughs> I have stepped outside my comfort zone so many times, so many times. And sometimes I look back and I'm like, wow, I'm really surprised I did that. But, you know, it's, I but don't know. But then when you look back on it, you, you, I'm sure in most cases you're glad that you did. Yes. Yeah. Oh, 1,000%. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because I grew up painfully shy, very awkward feeling, um, very much not, like, petrified of stepping out of my comfort zone. Because... I didn't really have a comfort zone. I was always in this state of discomfort, Mm -hmm. I felt like. And so now, just knowing that I can do it, even if things don't turn out fine, I'm still doing what I'm I'm wanting to do at the time. Um, So when we stay in our comfort zones too much, we don't realize that over time, our self-confidence tends to go lower and lower Mm -hmm. because... Over and over, we're not listening to our what our brains want us to do. So our self-confidence plummets, and then negative thinking is reinforced. All right. So we might think that we're staying at the status quo, but we're really not. It's It really is a negative to us. So, yeah. you know, looking for opportunities and then um, really dissecting the reasons why you're not makes a big difference. So one of the other things is um, fear of failure. Who wants to feel feel like a failure, right? Especially the way society paints us as needing to either win. You know, you're either a winner or you're a failure. Well, look at just look at the Super Bowl. You know, you've got two teams who've done so well all season long. They get to the Super Bowl, and then there's a winner and a loser, as opposed to first place, second place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, same thing like with the Olympics. Here are these elite, elite athletes who've spent countless hours perfecting their craft Mm -hmm. and then if they don't get the gold at the olympics they feel like a failure when in reality how many you know they're more talented than millions and millions of people making the olympic team in the first place is a tremendous achievement exactly exactly or the other cultures where if you don't come out number one you come home in shame which is terrible right that's you know that's not good for people either so just getting over that that thinking so most of this sense of failure is only a state of mind so instead of labeling yourself as a success or a failure realize that every day we're all growing and learning so while there will always be unexpected challenges more often than not we succeed right so and the more we step out of our comfort zone with big things and little things, mm-hmm. we're going to have more experiences of feeling like we were successful. Mm-hmm. And then giving ourselves a pat on the back instead of being critical, right? Because sometimes people will step out of their comfort zone and they'll succeed, but then they start nitpicking what could have mm-hmm. been better. Right. And that's right. not that's not a good habit to get into either. It doesn't have to be a difficult thing either. Right. So, so few people... Uh, Everybody communicates these days either by text message or email for the most part or through Facebook, whatever. And uh, there's not as much uh, what I would call human contact as there as there once was. Like I, I'm sure people have trepidation even about like you know calling old friends that they haven't spoken to uh, in a while. Yes, you know that they would like to actually talk with rather than maybe even text with or email with, or be on Facebook with, if they could actually talk to this person, and, and, and a lot of people probably want to, but I don't want to bother him or her, or whatever the case may be, 
you know. Right, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, or just striking up converse, a simple conversation right. with a stranger in a yeah. store in yeah. line. Yeah. Some people have a really hard time with that, and it really is out of their comfort zone. So then they just don't do it. They don't, you know, and you can miss experiences of making new friends or learning new things about people. Um, so, you know, where is your comfort zone? Learning where your own comfort zone is and right. what makes you feel uncomfortable that you need to get over. Now, here's a, a good one that, that you have bring up in your in your article. And uh, no, no matter how old you may be, normally you, you know, associate uh, music lessons with younger people, but it doesn't have to be that way necessarily. Uh, like, you know, a lot of adults... I mean, when I was young, I took piano lessons, but, you know, my, my parents and my grandmother always said, you know, you have to, you know, do it. You have to continue to practice or you're going to lose it, you know, mm-hmm. lose that skill. And guess what? I lost that skill. <laughs> I did. And the world didn't yeah. stop spinning. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. You know, I did other things. Right. Uh, but, uh, and I wish I hadn't now. I wish I kept playing that piano. But a lot of adults want to take uh, music lessons, whether it's, you know, play the piano, play the trumpet, whatever it may be, uh, the, the drums, you name it. It could be any musical instrument, guitar, and, and and maybe, you know, fear to start at the age of, you know, 50 or 60 years old. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And we do over time. We'll get if we don't pay attention to this, we will get worse and worse at st- stepping out of our comfort zone. But I love the fact that you brought up being a child and doing new things because when we teach our children to try new things and help them learn how to step out of their comfort zone, you know, instead of just, you know, I don't know why this is bothering you, just do it. Instead, talk to them and say, why does this make you feel uncomfortable? Teach them how to diagnose their own issues with stepping out of their comfort zone. And each time they do that, it's going to open the doors for them to do it again. So for example, when you started piano lessons, you know, and it, and it taught you to step out of your comfort zone in that situation, there was probably another time where you were confronted with something where maybe you wouldn't have tried it, but because your brain already had that experience, instead you were like, oh, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, one I, will I, help the next and then the next. Right. I, I guess it was just, you know, more acceptable or in your mind it's more acceptable to take music lessons when you're young rather than when you're 50 or 60 or 70 years old. But, you know, in, in that scenario, you're never too old. Never to too that. old. Never too old. And, you know, that reminds me of there was um, somebody who years ago wrote to Dear Abby and they wanted to go. They hadn't gone to college. They wanted to go to college. Yeah, yeah. And the person was 36 and wrote to Dear Abby. And That's said, young. I, Yes, that is young. It is very young. But she wasn't feeling young at the time because she didn't go right after high school. Right. So she wrote to Dear Abby and she said, I really want to go to college, but I'm 36 years old. And by the time I graduate and get my degree, I'm going to be 40. And you know what Abby's response was? Well, how old are you going to be in four years if you don't go to college? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You're going to be the same age. You'll never be 36 again. Right? You're going to be the same age. (laughs) Yeah. So why not? And you know, we always run into those articles every now and then of people who were in their 80s who yeah. went and finished their high school diploma right. or, yeah. or whatever they wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. Right. Or, you know, some of the uh, most successful people in the world didn't start their craft until they were older. All right. So there's yeah. tons of stories of people who didn't start till they were in their 50s and 60s. Exactly. No, that's very true. And, you know, especially with education, I mean, it's... Uh, I'm sure easier today than ever to uh, you know obtain higher education with so many options. The the uh, two year schools that, that we have, like uh, NHTI, uh, Manchester Community College, uh, all the online courses that are offered. So it's, right. it's it's I'm sure easier right now than it's ever been to either start you know uh, further education or continue it. Right. And when you're older and you're driven to get out of your comfort zone to do that, it's usually because there's a topic that you're really eager to study and you love. And between the passion and the maturity, you're going to do much better when you do go to college. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because you really want it now, you know, Uh, 
or is right out of high school, maybe you know you could have needed a break and and then never went back. But now you want it. And, exactly. And you'll set your mind to it and and do it. And that'll drive us too. Is our passion helps push us out of our comfort zone. Yeah, it's very true. And you hear about so many people now uh, going back to school uh, in one form or another, whether it's actually going to that particular institution or you know having you know doing courses online. Uh, right. Which There's so, so many, many people options. do these days. Yep. So many options. Yeah. Oh, exactly. So. Uh, you know, that's, uh, that's another one where you're, you know, stepping out of your, your comfort zone, but then, you know, just think, I mean, uh, in order to, you know, move forward in your job, maybe you need, uh, to get a degree. Maybe it requires, you know, a, ma- a master's degree, uh, to, to advance in the position you're in. Perhaps it does, uh, or whatever it is, or you just want to learn more about a particular topic, whatever it might be. Yeah. And then also yeah. keep in mind that, other people don't have the same comfort zone as you. So somebody else might be really having a hard time stepping out of their comfort zone to do something that you find easy, but maybe that's where you could help them, yeah. right? Instead of being, you know, instead of being critical and saying, well, I don't know why that's so hard for you. It's easy for me. Instead, look at that as a, an opportunity for you to help them, you know, give them some tips on how they can step out of their comfort zone. Exactly. I know we're talking to people right now who have been in that boat that, uh, you know, wanted to continue their education or wanted to, you know, learn how to play a musical instrument or, or do something, even like learn to swim at an advanced age or jump out of a plane or go up in a hot air balloon. Somebody out there has done that, that we're talking Absolutely. to right now. We Probably do. many people. Right. And even the little to. things, you know, yeah. we do it all. We do it all the time. Yeah. We're faced with that. Um, and one of the other things that keeps people from stepping out of their comfort zones is they let life get in the way mm. because, you know, we're all busy. We have yep. our long to-do list yep. and it's too easy to just keep procrastinating and not doing what we really want to do. Exactly. You know, exactly right. You know, as we talked about, like playing a musical instrument or doing something like, or learning uh, how to play a new sport, whether it be tennis, whether it be golf or Anything else for that matter, riding a horse, whatever, whatever it is. Right. Or yeah. say a new neighbor's moved in and you've been procrastinating going over and yeah. knocking on the door and introducing yourself. Exactly. Right. Um, you know, if you don't find that, you know, if you if you're uneasy with that, for example, you could say to yourself, OK, at, you know, I'm going to set the timer when the timer goes off. I'm going over there. I'm going to knock on the door and say hi and introduce myself. And then I know an hour from now. I'll be back home and I'm going to be feeling good that I did it. Yeah. Yeah. So reminding yourself of all the good things that are com- going to come out of what you want to do can help push you over that, that little challenge. There are so many things, big and little, that uh, and just step out of that comfort zone. And most of the time, most of the time, uh, it'll make you feel better. Right. You know? And, you know, just the... If you if we keep thinking about things that we want to do, we want to do, we want to do, and then we keep thinking about the reasons why we're nervous about it, yeah. that yeah. only increases our stress. Yeah. So the stress keeps going up every time we think about it. That's not good for our health. It's not good for our blood pressure. So we are we keep experiencing the negative part of that. Right. But then we never get to the positive part. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's like running for office, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone. <laughs> that, running for office. That could Not very... that I'm going to do it. I tried that once and... <laughs> And and succeeded, but uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> At least for a while, anyway. Well, and you know, maybe what? when I become old enough to be a state rep, I'll do it. No. <laughs> and if you do step out of your comfort zone, you try something and you don't like it at all. Well, guess what? Now you know. <laughs> there you go. There you it go. It wasn't a mistake to do it. It yeah. wasn't a mistake to push yourself out of your comfort zone yeah. because now you know. No, I, I I say that because I know we have a a candidate coming up in the next hour, uh, General Don Bolduck. Brigadier General Bolduck, uh, double purple heart winner, and uh, he'll be with us in the in the next hour. So he's, he's nice. stepped out of his comfort zone, and he's uh, he's running for Senate now. So we'll talk to him in the next hour. One forty nine is our time. Actually, now one fifty. Time flies when uh, Coach Carol Phillips is in the house, author of Fifty Two Simple Ways to Health, and uh, we'll have uh, a little bit more with uh, Coach Carol coming up. 
uh, right after these words on uh, 1077 The Pulse and News Talk 981 WTSN. 1077 The Pulse. News Talk 98.1 WTSN. Great to have you along with us. Coach Carol Phillips is in the house, author of 52 Simple Ways to Help. Today we're talking about stepping outside of your comfort zone. That's right. Get out of that box you force yourself to live in. I have another example for you. The first time you did uh, an interview on on the radio. (laughs) Yeah. All right, I get to share that story because that was hilarious. <laughs> so long story short, I was self-publishing my book, and I was going to New York to do this event. And I was in this coaching program, and it said to get some local media under your belt and get your, you know, your book done before. And so a good friend of ours referred me to you, and yeah. so you were kind enough to set up a meeting with me. And so... We're sitting there, Ken's asking me a few questions, and of course I'm hoping he's going to invite me on to the show for uh, for an interview. And so then he says, you know, how would you like to be on the show? And I said, oh, that would be great. And I grabbed my calendar book, and I said, well, you know, wh- what's good for you? And he said, we're going to walk across the hall right now and record <laughs> it right now. <laughs> and I've never had to put my poker face on so fast in my whole life. I was a wreck on the inside. On the outside, I'm like, oh, that would be just wonderful. So you got thrown right into it, (laughs) and you did great. You did great. Like pulling the Band-Aid off, right? Right, exactly. Uh, Yeah, yeah, that was was a good story to tell. (laughs) See, that was stepping out of your comfort zone, right? Yeah, with no notice. (laughs) Right. Well, here you go. Put on your poker face and step out of your comfort zone. So, <laughs> so look yeah. what it led if, to. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if I can do it, trust me, anybody can do it. So, But, you know, there's some great benefits to pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone. So, you know, we get this great feeling of accomplishment. You know, it, it really is tied to our health and wellness and our brain wanting to grow and socialize, et cetera. It helps us overcome our fears, especially if afterwards we stop and say, you know what? I did a good job. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, I know I was an older student when I went back to college, and I procrastinated for a long time because mm-hmm. I wanted to go, wanted to go, kept thinking about it, thinking about it. And then I finally pushed myself to pick up the phone and call to get information. And when I hung up, I re- vividly remember thinking, you know what? Uh, it was just that phone call. I just needed to pick up the phone and make the phone call and get the information. So sometimes we just need to really do one little thing and it gets the ball rolling. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Absolutely. Really. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Usually it is just something, it's something, the first step, just take the first step. That's it. Um, and it will lead to another one. Absolutely. And another one. And another one. Yep. And it improves our self-confidence and it gives you the tools to do it again in the future. So then you can... You know, and you can build up to something maybe that's more challenging for you to do. So, like going up a staircase. That's very true. Uh, or up the down staircase, which probably isn't a good thing to do. But, Coach Carol, <laughs> give, give, yeah, I know you have an aud- uh, a challenge for our, our vast, uh, New Hampshire and Maine audience. Yes. Yeah, so here's your challenge. Spend a few days thinking about what you've been wanting to do, but haven't taken action yet because there's an element you find uncomfortable. So you may identify several. So just choose one, then pick a day within the next week to turn that desired desire into action, even if the action is only one small step toward your goal. And then put it on your calendar and make it happen. But then remember afterwards to give yourself the kudos that you deserve for stepping outside of your comfort zone. Very good. All right. And uh, maybe next time around, you'll uh, we'll hear from somebody who has stepped outside of their comfort zone, thanks to you. And, that would be great. Yeah, and your definitely. Advice. And yeah. they can call the next time I'm here, which is Wednesday, March 4th at 2.05. Very good. So join us then, one uh, month from now. All right. Mark your calendars, folks. Wednesday, March 4th at uh, 2.05. 2.05 uh, for Coach Carroll on uh, March 4th. So, uh, Coach Carroll, always great to see you. Thanks, Ken. And, and I know you're keeping busy with... Uh, all your endeavors yes. and continuing to step outside your comfort zone. Yes. Just, just think, you know, if you hadn't done that, you, you wouldn't have this, this radio segment. For sure. Yeah. See, it can For lead sure. to great things. So welcome to all the new listeners. All right. Thanks, Coach Carol. We'll, we'll see you on the 4th of March.